Lord be with you. It's so nice to see all of you here this morning at University Baptist Church as we begin our Holy Week journey. Today marks the start of our journey to Easter. And as we go through this week, it's important not to get ahead of ourselves, to pause at each stop and to take in the meaning and the movement and to think about what it can say to us on our faith journey. And so today we look at the triumphal entry, Palm Sunday, when Jesus came into Jerusalem. And we think about how that impacts our own view of not only God, but the world and our lives in the world. So as we listen to the prelude this morning, I invite you to think about how you view triumph and victory today. Please join me in the call to worship. Sing songs of loudest praise. Hosanna. Sing songs that are unashamed. Hosanna. Sing songs without being afraid. Hosanna. Sing for the God of tomorrow and today. Hosanna. Let us worship the one worthy to be praised.
join with me in prayer. God of grace, your word is like a song. It is the melody that we long to sing, the refrain that we pray will get stuck in our heads. So as we return to scripture once more, we pray that you would allow us to sink into this song. Allow us to hear the truth in between the words. Allow the cries of the crowd's hosannas to feel like our own. With open hearts and open ears, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to University Black Baptist Church. We're so glad that you are here. We're thrilled to have you with us. And we want you to know that God loves you. We love you. And we want to walk in faith with you. Everyone is welcome here. At UBC, we don't pass the offering plate, but would love to have your financial participation in our ministry. You can do so by placing your offerings in the designated boxes at the back of the church, scanning your QR code that's on the pew card in front of you, or give online, to give online, or by mailing your contribution to the church office. No gift is too small, and whether you give or not, we are glad you are here today. To help us keep track of attendance, please take a moment and find the red attendance books that are uh, conveniently placed on the aisles near the pew, on the pews near the aisles. Whether you're a regular member or a first-time visitor, we kindly ask you to fill out your information. If you're new to UBC, adding your details will help us connect with you and learn about more about you as you explore our community. And as we've already mentioned this morning, this is the beginning of Holy Week. Today is the beginning. And we have uh, some wonderful opportunities to live into the experience of Holy Week before we skip over to Easter. You know, Easter, sometimes we get Palm Sunday and we're waving the palm branches and being so thrilled that we're all together. And then we step around, sometimes we skip around to Easter and celebrate Christ's resurrection without having waded through the waters of, uh, the, the, of Holy Week, of the time of, of Spy Wednesday, which we will observe this Wednesday at 7 o'clock, and Maundy Thursday, and Good Friday. We need, to, we need to live into those moments, and when we do that, then when we get to Easter, it's even more glorious and more uh, of a wonderful time of celebration within our community. So make note of uh, in, the insert in your bulletin has the schedule uh, on the back of the hymn that we're using later in the service. But if you'll look, that's the schedule of where, um, of, of the times and when the services will be right here in the sanctuary. For our church members, we would like to encourage you uh, during these services to park in the uh, 14th Street garage to leave the spaces in our parking lots available for our guests who will be coming. One of our guests that will be with us is Ken Miedema. We have been planning for this for many, many months and we're so excited to have Ken with us as we observe this holiest of weeks. I tell my friends every year, this is my favorite week. It's extremely busy for anyone who is in ministry, but it is what gives me life even through all of the busyness. So I invite you to also take time to pause each Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday these, this week to join with us, to breathe and to remember. And now Andrew Mundell will come and read our epistle lesson. Good morning. Good morning. Today's epistle lesson is Philippians 2, 5 through 11. But the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, 
and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Hey, good morning. A uh, quick question. Have you ever been to a parade? Yes. What kind of parade did you go to? They've been to lots of parades and have been in a parade. Yeah. We've, been, we've seen the Dogwood Parade. Very good. Dogwood Parade. I used to go to that a lot. Um, did you see any special things in the parade? I saw. I also saw the um, the Thanksgiving Macy's Day Parade. Oh my gosh! Exciting. Have you ever watched a parade on TV? Yeah. Yeah. How about you out there? You ever watched a parade on TV? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, one time. Wait. I forgot. Oh, okay. Did you see a band in the parade? 
Any bands, right? People um, driving funny looking cars, floats, people waving. Okay, so um, way back in Jesus' time, Palm Sunday was kind of like a parade, um, except that in Jesus' time, the parades that they had were usually welcoming people back from a battle or a war. They were kind of celebrating that their, um, their army won, or they were celebrating a king that was coming to town, like a very powerful leader. Well, Jesus wasn't like a very powerful leader. He wasn't um, a high priest or anything like that. He was a regular guy but he was going to Jerusalem, and he sent people ahead of him. Do you remember those, um, his friends that followed him? What were they called? Disciples. Yeah. He sent two of those disciples ahead, and he said, hey, can you go find a donkey? And they were like, what? A donkey? And he was like, yes, and make sure it is a young donkey. Okay. So they went to Jerusalem, and they found a colt. a colt, a donkey, a young donkey, and they took it. And, and Jesus said, hey, and by the way, when you take the donkey, if anybody asks, tell them we'll bring it back. Well, that's kind of like stealing, right? I mean, like, go find a donkey and, like, just take it and tell them we'll bring it back. But they found the donkey, and they said, don't worry, we're going to bring it back. Jesus is going to use it, but we'll make sure you get your donkey back. So they go, they, they get Jesus on the donkey, and they're coming to town. Well, everybody shows up. Why do you think everybody showed up to see Jesus riding on a donkey to Jerusalem? What's the big deal? Well, Jesus, just days before, had been in another city, and he raised Lazarus from the dead. Do you know what that means? That means a guy was dead, and now he's alive. Stella went, ha! Yeah, that's it. Like, who wouldn't want to go see a guy who raised someone from the dead? So word traveled. Like, this Jesus, this Jesus guy is way cool. He made someone alive. He's, he's preaching, he's, and the crowd is growing. His disciples are saying, hey, come with us, come with us. He's, he's the son of God. He says he's the son of God. A lot of people believed it. And they're like, yeah, we're going to come to the parade. This is going to be cool. Some people are like, mm, not sure about that. But I'm going to go anyway because I just want to see him. Like, that could be way cool. So they... They didn't have flags or banners. They picked up palms. So that's what they used to kind of welcome him in, palms. Jesus came in peacefully. He didn't say, hey, go get the band. Go get the middle school band and have them show up at Jerusalem. We're going to make this a big time affair. He didn't do that. He found a donkey. He brought his disciples, and they just went into town, and it ended up being a really big deal because everybody told their friends, and they all showed up. And the Pharisees, were they happy? Like the chief priest, head of the church, temple? They were not. No, they were not happy. And they are like, stop, stop right now. This should not happen. And Jesus said, mm can't stop that. People are just coming to see us right into town. And, and that's how that whole story went down. It was the Passover feast, so there were lots of extra people in town that came to hear and see Jesus because they wanted to see, oh my gosh, what is going on with this guy? He must be really famous. All right, can you pray with me? Dear Lord, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for letting him ride into town, humble, quietly, in his own way, and bringing in lots of crowds, showing his way, your way, in our world. Amen.
Please join me in prayer. Dear God, thank you for the opportunity to gather on this Palm Sunday. Thank you for yesterday's life-giving and fire-extinguishing rain. At this time of year especially, we thank you for the beauty of your creation, when even the pear and cherry trees, the daffodils and the forsythia seem to shout Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. God, we stand at the beginning of a week bookended by happiness and celebration, but with sadness, betrayal, and death in between. We know that triumph is at the other end. We also know what we have to go through to get there. Just as in our own lives, Lord, the only way forward is through. Through disappointment, illness, betrayal, academic challenge, bullying, bereavement, to get to the other side. As we go through, Lord, give us strength and give us hope. Lord, we pray for those that serve in ministry this week at UBC and throughout your church. In a busy week for them, we ask that you would safeguard their health and strength. We pray especially for Ken Miedema as he travels to lead us later this week. Bring him to us safely and bless him as he prepares to lead us. And finally, Lord, bless the community that is University Baptist Church. We pray that our journey through this Holy Week would be transformative for us and that we would emerge next Sunday and beyond triumphant and closer to the church that you would have us to be. Bless our continued worship, Lord, as we pray as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lesson, lesson comes from John 12, verses 12 through 16. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. The word of the Lord.
Today we begin that final part of our Lenten journey. We, we are entering Holy Week, that holiest of times, and like Susan, this is a favorite part of the Christian calendar for me. I just really, really appreciate the richness and the meaning of this season, and like Susan, and I appreciate Kevin's prayer for those who are leading and organizing churches at times like this. It is a busy time, but it's an amazing time, a rich time, and a time full of God's goodness, wonder, and mercy. As we enter this time, as we pause on each, at each stop along the journey, we, like the disciples, can get confused. We can take our eye off of the central part of the story and, and, and miss the point. This year, be intentional. Give yourself time to exhale and take in the meaning of the journey. Maintain your focus. Keep your eyes uh, looking ahead at what is to come. But at each stop, in the midst of the palm branches of today, the betrayal that we acknowledge and remember on Wednesday, the time with his Merry band of followers on Thursday in the darkness of Friday. Give yourself space for this journey and each stop on the way. Today, we look at Hosanna. We look at loud shouts. We look at a parade. And before the parade passes by, we consider who Jesus is and what he's saying to us. Let's pray together. Merciful maker of all things, we come before you as a body of believers who worship your name, praise you in our songs and prayers, listen as your word is proclaimed and read aloud, and lift one another up in encouragement. We come today with an assortment of things on our mind. We come today carrying the baggage of a life lived, and you know that. You know where we are at this moment. You know the weariness behind yawns. You know the energy behind fidgeting in our seats. And you know what we bring. You know us, Lord. There's no reason for us to hold anything back or hide from you. So we come as we are, 
knowing that you love us just as we are, where we are, and know that you invite us into this wonderful party that is your family of faith. As we worship you today, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In our gospel lesson today that Joyce so clearly read, the insightful narrator of John says the disciples didn't understand these things at first. Thankfully, this editorial note was written after Easter, after that first Easter. Back then, with the benefit of hindsight, someone thought they didn't get it. Thank goodness we get it now. The Gospel of John came together around between the years 90 at the earliest and maybe 110, 120 at the latest. And the implication is, in that line, these early Christ followers started to really understand the central theme in Jesus' message. But to that, I would say, did they? Or maybe to us who hear this word read, do we? Do we get it? We've heard this passage. Many of us have heard this before. We, we know what's coming. This is familiar territory. We're about to enter the holiest week on the Christian calendar. The story is in all four Gospels. We have it in Matthew 21, uh, Mark chapter 11, and Luke 19. Here we are in, in John 12. This great crowd has gathered in Jerusalem for the big Passover festival. And this... This is the moment where Jesus enters. Laura invited us to think about parades. And so I was thinking about a number of different parades I've either seen or, I guess, been privileged to be a part of, been cajoled to be in. I don't know exactly how one gets into a parade. Uh, but my favorite parade memory that came back, where's the altos? You guys have moved. Um, Sopranos, Laura. Uh, my favorite parade memory was driving my church in, in the parade. Um, I, we, years ago, made a cardboard cutout of our church and put it around my Jeep and put Christmas lights all around it, and the church was in the parade. That's not like the parade Jesus was in. The people waved these palm branches in the air, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Yes, the King of Israel. Because they thought something was going to happen. They thought something was going to change. They thought Jesus was going to be who they wanted him to be. And as they shouted out, Hosanna, Jesus found this donkey and sat on its back. This scene entering Jerusalem includes a tone of triumphalism, nationalism, especially in the Synoptic Gospels. John tones it down a little bit by putting Jean, uh, Jesus on this donkey. But by placing him there, he takes this prophetic action designed to counteract any hint of nationalism. And I found that helpful this year as I was rereading John's version of Jesus' triumphal entry and thinking about how nationalism has taken such a tone and so much ink in our papers today. We don't need to conflate the love of Christ or the love for Christ and a desire to follow him with patriotism or nationalism. John, John wants us to see something very different. John wants us to see the people's perception juxtaposed with Jesus' message and who he is. And that is a Lord of humility, one who comes riding on this donkey. John combines a few Hebrew verses in this citation. Do not be afraid. Look, your king is coming. The point, though, for him and for his original audience, is that Jesus is 
the king, and he is in our midst. Not that kind of king, not the one that you thought you wanted, not the one you thought you needed, but Jesus is our king, and he is here. Our reading ends with confusion. The disciples didn't understand. And the truth is, so often today, we don't understand. Later, after the resurrection, it made more sense. But right now, they were confused, just like we get so confused so easily about what it means to follow Jesus, to truly make him Lord of our lives. So when we get to this day, Palm Sunday, there can be something alluring about the triumphal fanfares, about the children and bell ringers coming down the aisle with palm branches. People loved Jesus at this moment in Jerusalem. They shouted their praises. And wouldn't it be great to stop right here? Things are good. But we can't. We move forward into Holy Week, And we have to wrestle with something rooted deep within our own tradition. That very fine line between love and hate. The people shouting Hosanna want to follow Jesus. They like the idea of following him, but they don't know what to do about it. The disciples, the ones who've been with him from the start, they don't really understand either. They remember what had been written about him, but they still don't really get it. What does it mean to follow Jesus? What does it mean to follow him today? One thing it means is going through this week with him in real time. It means taking each step with him and recognizing how they contribute to this story of love and redemption. Next week, Easter is coming. We're not going to stop before we get there, and we're not going to end the story before we get there. But before we do, we remember this week and what Jesus has ahead of him. And I intentionally said has, putting it in the present tense, so that we can think about it in terms of the story as if it were unfolding before us, and as if we were in the story seeing it. Go through each step, live it, appreciate it, and think about what it means for you in your faith. Today, where do you find yourself in this confusing celebration? See, Jesus' physical life is going to come to an end. He will die. But here on Palm Sunday, we have these great cries of Hosanna. And it seems like a celebration. It seems like the crowd at a great sporting event, crying out for their team to win, getting worked up more and more. And then when the game is over, pouring out from the stadium into the streets, and instead of taking a deep breath and going, well, that was a good game, they continue to get more and more worked up. It doesn't matter sometimes whether the team won or lost. The people get into a frenzy. And you've probably seen this on the news before after, you know, World Cup or World Series or Super Bowl or some other big, big sporting event when people go out and begin turning over cars. And sometimes it's so baffling because you're like, you're destroying stuff and your team won. Like, it's this joyful destruction? I don't understand. That fine line between love and hate has been blurred. They were just crying out for their team to win and to to make the final shot or goal or unit or whatever it is. And something happened. Something happened between those closing seconds of the game and and, and their love for the sport and, and the joy and the wonder and looking at it and hoping it goes well and going outside and suddenly becoming aggression. violence. Scientists study this fine line between love and hate and and, and find that the brain circuitry in both emotions, especially when they're extreme emotions, is, is, is roughly the same. The only real difference is that hate retains a little bit of rational thought. Love is blind. 
The crowds of people who were so excited, they love Jesus, they remember the miracles, they remember Lazarus. They've heard about it. No, they didn't hear about the meaning. They didn't hear about the theology. They didn't hear about the part of the story that was intended to point to God's glory, God's dominion over death. They didn't hear about all that stuff. They just heard about the zombie coming out of the tomb. And like Stella's reaction, So if they had heard that, they want to see this guy. Maybe he'll do it again. Maybe he's brought Lazarus, and maybe Lazarus is still wearing the tomb clothes, and it's going to be so cool. You can imagine this part of the story that got around wasn't the part where Jesus was saying, you see, God has dominion even over death. It was the part where this guy raised some dude from the dead. I want to see it. And just like frenzied sports fans who are only moments away from a riot, the crowd remembers the first part, the amazing part, the sensational part. Loving and following Jesus can be confusing because like those people with the palm branches, we want victory. We want to win. We want a big triumph. We really like Palm Sunday. I, mean, I, I like the bells. I like all glory, laud, and honor. I, I like the, when you pull all the stops out on the organ. Every, I don't know what you're really doing, but in my mind's eye, it's like every one of them. Just <laughs> Buddy the Elf turning lights on. Of the characters in this passage, though, there's one group that retains some rational thought. There's one group that as emotions run higher and higher, as love pours into a frenzy, there's one group that takes a beat and says, let's think about this. We don't know how Jesus felt. The gospel doesn't tell us his emotional state. It does tell us that the same people who were will very soon be calling for his crucifixion break palm branches. It tells us that. It it shows us how those who profess their love for him can be very fickle and change sides so quickly. But those who stay rational in the face of this celebration, in the face of this great expression of love, those who stay rational are the Pharisees. They look at what's happening and say, we need to recalculate our approach. In John 12, 19, they say, this is getting us nowhere. We've got to look at for another way to get him. If we do something now, the whole world is going to stampede after him. Let's pause. Let's think. The crowds, the ones who love Jesus, don't really have a plan. And as the week unfolds, they're drawn away from their love to cry out, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And very few of us would read the Gospel of John and side with Pontius Pilate or the Pharisees. John, in fact, gives us a bit more detail about the exchange between Jesus and Pilate. There are no churches, though, where Pilate becomes the central figure. But each day, each one of us makes little decisions. We take little actions to side with the crowd and avoid the man on the donkey. Sometimes our decisions aren't little. Sometimes our actions are not small. But the thing is, every single one of us does it. We sing of our love for God. We sing all glory, laud, and honor. We proclaim our belief in a risen Savior. Then we turn around, place God on a shelf, and through our lives, join the crowd. We may not say it out loud, we may not shout it, we may not be crying out, crucify him, but at the very least, we may mouth the words. How we do this is different for each one of us. But the thing is, we all have the opportunity to turn to God. We can confess our love of Palm Sunday and share with Jesus our fear of Good Friday. We can acknowledge to Jesus I don't know how to love you. Sometimes I don't know what you want me to do, but I trust you. 
and I'm going to follow you. I'm not going to stop here in this moment. I'm not going to stop in the perceived victory. I'm not going to stop with the waving of the palm branches. I'm going to continue on that path with you, continue following, continue asking where you lead, and say, where you lead, I will follow. We can celebrate today if we do, not with the crowds, but with an eye to what's next with an awareness of the week that will unfold ahead of us, with an appreciation that this week isn't the end, the darkest moments of this week aren't the end, we go through this journey knowing that Easter is coming. Maybe instead of celebrating Palm Sunday, we commemorate it. Not in triumphalism, not in nationalism, not in anything else that takes us away from the kingdom of God and the glory of our Lord, not in some earthly victory, but to make Jesus' entry real for our present day lives. We remember this day by stepping away from the crowds and maybe stepping closer to the man on the donkey reaching out and placing our hand on the animal and saying, you, you are the one I'm going to follow. You are the one who I am going to go with as we move forward into this week. You are the one who I will continue to follow beyond Easter. You are the one who will be Lord of my life, no matter where it takes me, no matter where you lead, I will follow. Amen. We come to our time of response, and each one of us has the opportunity to respond to whatever God is saying to us today. The interesting thing is, when I talk about that allure of triumphalism, there may be some here today who say, that's not me, that, that, that has no appeal to me. And so I don't need to step away from the crowds because I never was with them. And that's okay. See, the thing about God's invitation is all of us are on a spiritual journey, and wherever we are on that path, we can respond to whatever God is saying. And so where we are on this path is as unique in our response as we are. Today, as we look ahead to this, this Easter, and this Holy, this Holy Week in Easter, I want to invite you to think about where you are on your journey with Christ Maybe you, you don't really have one, and if that's the case and you'd like to begin one, this is a great place to do it, and we'd love to do that with you. You are invited to come forward as we sing and share that with us, and we'd love to celebrate it with you. But for those of you who are here and, and, and you're on a journey with Christ, ask God how you may get closer to the one who is riding on that donkey. Ask God what you may be led to do. God has a calling for each and every one of us, and it, it's up to us and how we respond. If you're here today and you've thought about ministry, we'd love to invite you and to explore that with us. If you're here today and you want to make this church your church, come forward as we sing. Or if you'd just like to pray with somebody, you're welcome to come as we sing. But each one of us can respond. Whether we get up from where we're seated or stay where we are, we can respond as we sing our hymn of response, My Jesus, I Love Thee. Let's stand together and sing.
Just after the worship service, we're going to have our Easter egg hunt. So if you're here and expecting that, you make your way down to the Fellowship Hall. There are 16 pizzas? There are. Okay, good. Uh, you never know until you, uh, they, they actually get here. Uh, and so if you're here and you don't know anything about it, but you'd like to come and see the kids look for Easter eggs, you are welcome to come down to the Fellowship Hall as well. Now, blessed wanderer, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find the courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb, and to speak of your faith. And when the world falls apart, may you hear God's voice deep within saying, Take heart, it is I. Be not afraid. You are called, you are blessed. In both your ups and your downs, you always belong to God. Go now in peace. Go trusting that good news. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. I, I pray that this has been a meaningful time for you and that you've been able to experience God. You've thought more about your faith and, and how you live and how your life reflects what you believe. As you go from this time out into your day, I invite you to think about what you experienced during this time. Think about the, the hymns, the prayers, the scripture lessons, Think about the, all of the parts and, and pick one thing. Pick one thing that really spoke to you and reflect on that this week. Think about it and try to see if there's a way that you can live and reflect that to the world around you. You are the light of the world. You are the salt. Be the salt 